Hello and welcome. Yet another devlog, number 27 on the 9th December 2023. We're about halfway between two patches. The last one was released, I think, like one and a half weeks ago, and it's a pretty much like what two maybe three weeks until the next one uh, so we want to look at primarily at the upcoming update which will release on the 28th december but uh, we also want to do a bit of a recap of uh, well the previous weeks uh, what has been going on in other words this is as usual <laughs> a nice recap of the week and this one has been really really exciting and i can't wait to tell you all about it yeah so let's uh, not waste any time let's hop over to the notepad and uh, then we'll see what's up there. I'm sorry, I need to close this real quick. Okay, that's the first up for, for today. All right, let's see. Uh, get rid of this, and then we're here. So, devlog number 27, as I mentioned. This one is called uh, Battle Dress, because there's two very, very exciting and uh, incredibly cool features coming. Now, uh, if you've been watching last week, you know that I've been working a lot on uh, variations and uh, not just variations as in I'm going to make a couple more, but really try and establish a system where variations can be a core feature of the game for several reasons, which we'll get into in just a couple of minutes. Yeah? But before that, we wanted to do a little recap. Uh, last week we were already talking about variations, yeah, and so consider this as a direct continuation of last week in some part, but there's much, much more than that. <sighs> so, <laughs> in the meta section, I mentioned the recap and there's also, well, something else before we get into the other stuff. In regards to the previous, or like the current build to be more precise, that is right now live on Steam, you can play it right here. You can get the game of course for free and download it and then play it and um, all that other stuff here. Yeah? <laughs> so <laughs> there is currently a build running on the live branch, but of course we're also developing the new build and as such uh, will be running usually on the public beta, but this time we're on the private beta, which means there's even bigger changes coming. However, <laughs> as development goes, uh, and you remember this, you remember this maybe from 0.1.3 when we had the problem of the crashes. <laughs> For a development cycle, getting notifications or getting reports of issues, bugs, and especially crashes is of course not something that's great because, well, it essentially means that I'm dropping a lot of stuff and then I'm going and trying to fix things, yeah? But that, of course, doesn't mean that nobody should report anything to me, quite the contrary. It is great because every time I get a report about an issue and I can manage to fix that, I feel like I've added some value to the game or at least I've added something which is at least semi-important to somebody yeah and so for me this is great but on the other side well, sorry on the other hand i also notice more and more now with more people playing the game it also means that i need to sometimes divert a bit of time trying to fix some issues which i didn't have on my radar previously yeah and for time planning and all that stuff it is really a new challenge but a challenge which i very much welcome because that's what i wanted from the get-go and that's why the game is in early access yeah so We've had two uh, reports of uh, issues, namely one uh, was, um, yeah, let me just open Steam real quick, uh, you can see this in the discussions here, which is of course also uh, low-key an invitation to you, whoever's watching this, uh, to also participate in these if there's anything um, that you notice while you play the game. Now we've had a report, uh, let me just try and uh, find the screenshot real quick. Okay, that picture is deleted. I should have maybe saved it because I'm not, if I wasn't a Dumbo. But the main problem was the following. If we uh, close this here real quick and we're going to switch the branch to the regular branch. Uh, nah, 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 nah. I see how I have to improvise, but that's fine because we can do that right here right now. We're just going to switch branches. Um, this is, by the way, how you do that if you haven't done that beforehand. And it's a great way if you want to see the changes I'm talking about and the devlogs usually what I do is I uh, push things right away to the public branch today is a kind of a bit of an exception but um, next week I'm planning to 
take everything that is on a private branch and essentially push it to the public branch. So we have this kind of three-step process. Let me just uh, show this to you real quick. We are going from the private branch. Yeah, um, Let's just call it the editor. Here is the first one. That is the first step, right? That's essentially me working on things and testing things in the editor. The second one is the private branch on Steam. Then there's the public branch also on Steam. And lastly, the default branch, which you guessed it, is also on Steam, or let's call it Live Branch, to do this, so it's a bit more, bit more clear uh, what's meant by that. If you get the game and you play it just like that, you're not subscribed to any uh, beta or anything like that, you will see exactly that. You see the name of the game, and then you can play it, and then you are playing essentially what is the Live Branch. Let me just call this public beta, and this goes to pub private beta branch. If you want to get on more, or like if you want to get the newer build, right, that's what's here called beta, but it's not a beta in the sense of Anarchy's beta, it's much more the beta of the patch that will be deployed, as in other words, we're currently, I would want to call it the beta phase or the beta testing phase of 0.1.4, is <laughs> the patch we're about to release. But yeah, we've scratched that, the meta name doesn't really matter. The important part is really this, that you can play the changes before they go live which means that we will we have essentially established a three three step process of QA where I can test things and me and a couple of um, you know um, elected testers who have the code to the private beta branch then once that is sort of um, you know assured that we've tested it enough we can then push it to the public beta branch where then people who are really let's say encouraged uh, like engaged is the word i'm looking for they can then test um the the build on there and lastly and finally once that is done and usually that happens always on the 28th is that we take the public beta and the build that is on that branch and then we push it to the live branch where it will then be available to essentially everybody as the kind of the first choice of launch, if that makes sense, the default launch option. Um, so if we go into the default branch, which is the one that is currently, well, um, what you could consider live, we will be greeted here with 0.1.31, uh, which is um, essentially the well, the initial build of uh, Marche. Um, now, what did we actually want to check? All right, so I wanted to show you something. That's the bug that was reported to me. Now, I try to test with every input device, but of course I've got my own modus operandi. This is modus operandi. Um, that I go through the menus and I go through everything. When I test things, I usually have few notices here. Yeah? Um, you can you see I'm not moving the mouse at all because I rarely test things on mouse. I usually find it much more comfortable to go through the menus using the keyboard. But this comes with a problem because, well, <laughs> if I test something, here, for example, it is impossible for me to leave this menu without pressing cancel. Yeah? So I was thinking, okay, well, that works, fine, great. Yeah? Now, well, there's a little problem here, because what you can do is you can click on these boxes here that are currently not focused with your mouse, and then you can activate them, which is in itself a great feature, but it also introduces a couple new problems, because that means that you can essentially have this menu open without closing it and open another menu on top of it. That's not always a problem, yeah. but um, well, as you can see here, well, the menu doesn't close and that even stays for, yeah, you see that here? Now it's open, now I can cancel it. So there's a lot of weird behavior here, which, which shouldn't really be the case. Even worse than that, if you go on load here and then you go on exit here and you go back to main menu, well, you saw it already. <laughs> you see that the menus stay open here, yeah? Now these are things which uh, hopefully uh, are now fixed. We can test these later on, just in a second, so you can actually first hand see the progress uh, that I've made over well the last couple of days trying to troubleshoot the issue and even get to the idea that well it can only be triggered with a mouse, uh, and then also be investing like one or two hours just now trying to come up with a solution that makes sure that this say a load menu is always closed. So let's get out of here. Let's go over to the. Uh, uh, b -b -b to the private uh, beta branch, uh, which is here. 
and uh, we're gonna take that we're gonna download the new version who knows when i pushed that but it must have been like uh, right before i started the devlog i think i did like one or two changes so let's um boot this up and then <laughs> we'll see what we have here especially in regards to the differences to well um the live branch as you can see here we are now on 0.1.3.3 uh, so in a uh, later version and this is kind of the in-between version between 0.1.3 and 0.1.4 so let's do exactly the same. We're going to jump into Paradise. We're going to go in here. We're going to try the load thing. You can see the save option has been removed because, well, I'm not going to let you save, at least not at the moment. I'm not 100% sure whether I want to let you save at all. This is something that is under consideration. Uh, but um, at the moment, I just removed it because, well, it creates too many problems and I don't really have the time to do um, the troubleshooting at the moment. But um, we can, of course, reevaluate that later on um, during the um, development of the game. So I wanted to try something here, namely, um, you can see the exact same thing. I added the cancel button that is new. I'm not sure whether that's going to stay. I do feel, considering some people played more or less exclusively with the mouse, we need some kind of way to cancel out of that. Uh, but um, I don't like where it is at the moment. Yeah, So we'll have to see what we do with that. More importantly, though, what you can see here is, well, as soon as I that menu loses the focus, it automatically closes and it took me actually uh, i don't want to say a lot of work it was really one one hour or something to figure out how to exactly do that because this load menu or the load menu here and the save menu aren't regular menus or they're not incorporated in the bunch of regular menus but they're like their own thing so that's why it didn't get closed normally there's a cleanup function here which means that all the all the options yeah all the menus essentially get cleaned up and no menu should survive well the level transition yeah so that's exactly what's happening if you see if you go on this one here it should theoretically work now let's do a trial real quick see no menus great right so that's um that's how it should work and um well that's why i rely so much on you guys and want to thank you very much um for all the support and all the testing everybody has been doing no matter whether it's an anarchy uh, just recently or whether it has been uh, for autonomy a couple of, of <laughs> sorry i don't know what happened there <laughs> or whether it's autonomy uh, a couple of years ago when we were uh, busy developing that so <laughs> Here we go. Now, um, let's uh, look at um, the other thing. All right, fragment transfer. Now, oh, this is such a convoluted issue too, but um, I didn't really fix anything yet, uh, but I've been sens sensitivized. I don't know what's, what the proper thing is. My attention has been brought to the fact that, well, sometimes when you're in a fragment, um, you know, these little things here, uh, you do... What could happen is that your character doesn't get respawned, yeah? Or you lose control of your character, you can't control your character anymore. I'm gonna look into that, and there's also the other issue with the auto saves. Uh, remember how I said um, I didn't want to let you manually save because it creates too many problems? Well, exactly the same here with the auto saves. The difference is just, well, there's not as many cases to cover. No, um, because, well, I just need to look at where the autosaves happen and sometimes they happen maybe a couple of um, seconds too early, sometimes a couple of seconds too late. So there's something going on there. We're going to have to evaluate that and we're going to have to check out what's up with that. But um, I'm not really too worried considering there's like, what, like four or five um, points at which the game is saved. And apart from that, um, well, it isn't so it can't create the problem. No. And in regards to the player control, that is also, of course, something where we need to check out if that is because, well, the fragment is technically still running or something like that, whether the dialogue is still running. It is very likely something that happened that is um, triggered by the fragment not closing and cleaning up properly. Uh, but um, we'll be looking at that as well, of course. Now, so far about the so much about the recap and what has been happening. Um, what are we doing currently with the quote unquote with the old build or issues that have already persisted in the old build? And now that we have done with that, we can look at the cool shit, namely the new features. <laughs> I mentioned it beforehand last week. We were looking at Steam inventory, yeah, and the Steam inventory items. So let me just quickly recap this for you. There are in Steam. Um, 
<laughs> I, need to, I need to find the right way on how to go there without showing anything weird. Uh, but I found one, thankfully. So you can see my profile here. And then you can also click on my inventory. And you can see here that, uh, well, I've got a couple of items. A lot of them don't do anything yet. The um, There's only two items which currently do anything. Airiness is obviously for excommunication. You can see this here. So having this item and that is already implemented yeah uh, if you have this item here then uh well you um oh sorry wrong window then you can do the following you go here uh into excommunication you start a new game and then you can choose um well one of the two attires or appearances for duff and then you uh well hopefully let's check if it actually works you play as that particular variation oh come on please 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 okay so everything updated you can see this here new portrait new sprite and then also um because we're already here and well Ganymede's waiting on us let's just get it over with and beat the ever living shit out of him and we can see that this sprite here has also been updated so old uh, sa sorry same system for the most part well i can't go into the tab menu which is a kind of a bit of a shame uh all right that's a bit annoying i think we might have to alt f4 here Unless I do want to wait until the next turn, which we just did. So let's get out of here and then we're back to the main menu. That's how it's handled in excommunication and how it's been handled previously that at the start you choose a variation. I'm not really 100% sure how I want to handle it for excommunication. It might get changed down the line, but I want to show you what we're definitely going to be doing for Paradise and what we might also then be doing for excommunication um, at some point if I get around to it and if there's a good way to implement the same behavior to excommun uh, in excommunication as well. <sighs> I mentioned it last week <laughs> that um, I do want to look at uh, equipment as a, as a way to customize your character. So what you have is now a fourth equipment slot. You see here the regular ones, you see the weapon, you see the uh, armor, and then you also see the accessory. Now you have, uh, well, a variation equipment slot, and you can see the name of the uh, corresponding slot, of course, up here. Uh, so we go from weapon, armor, accessory, and variation. Now we've got a little item here, and it is currently not implemented as a check. I just have this set by default that you can equip that. Uh, but um, the challenge will now be to uh, hook this in in such a way, the same way as the excommunication stuff worked, that it checks for a specific item in your Steam inventory and whether you have that or not. Right now, it auto defaults to you have it. Yeah, so, excuse me. What I can do here is I can just equip that. Boop. <laughs> and you see, excuse me, sorry, I had to burp. What you can see here is that Lorna has already uh, changed her appearance, uh, the portrait has already been updated and uh, you can see the same uh, stuff here that she is also wearing her dress now instead of her military uniform. Yeah? And that's that's already the full idea of, um, well, um, how do you call it, variations. Yeah. Let me just check if this actually works. You can see here too in the dialogue her portrait has also been updated, which is absolutely amazing and grand. So uh, we can continue down this road and make it all like that. Uh, um, and then also, of course, there's the option to say, all right, she doesn't just doesn't just have one variation, but you could have a hundred or something like that. Yeah. And the cool thing is because I'm working with a generator, I can work on a lot of different variations and can make one after another. And well, for all intents and purposes, the sky is the limit. And, and that's already it. Yeah? Um, I think it's a really cool thing that you can do that here because it means that you just treat it as a piece of equipment and a lot of the intricacies, a lot of the requirements and a lot of the systems I can just hook into the overall equipment system and then can just push it in there. And the last thing that is remaining is uh, to make a check here and make a condition which I need to do some custom scripting for to say, okay, well, this should only be available for you to equip. Otherwise, it would be grayed out if you have the item. Yeah? Uh, remember, oh, Steam, here, this item here in your inventory. Now, I, sorry, I can't zoom in here. Maybe you should open this, ooh, my browser. Oh God, I've got so many things open. I need to, sorry, to uh, sanitize that just a second before we can uh, use that instead. Uh, let me just go to Steam. Uh, wait, it's Steam powered, right? And then we go on my inventory. Ooh, do, 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 do. Just a second. Okay, let me just do 
quick little check this looks all clean okay let me drop this over here so you can see this here so we can scroll now you can see um well you essentially need here lorna to have as an item and otherwise uh, this will be this here will be grayed out yeah, and that's already the entire process but there's one more addition to it I'm not sure when this is going to get implemented, so please don't get your hopes up quite yet. But um, the idea is, obviously, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you all the variation as equipment pieces. I'm going to put all of these into your inventory in-game, yeah? So you have a full list of all the currently available um, variations. But you can only equip the ones that you have in your inventory. Otherwise, it's going to be grayed out as in, well, you can't equip it. Yeah? So <laughs> if you then go into that uh, particular piece which you don't have, yeah, uh, and then you click here on um, the equivalent of equipping it, yeah, you select it essentially. Yeah, I would love, I'd love if the store page would open, or maybe I make an, an own UI window which then asks you, well, do you want to buy this? Yeah, and so you already have the monetization here also implemented within the game and I think that's a really important bit to let people know that well there's more content here available for you if you want but um, well we're gonna have to open your wallet unfortunately for that so I'm very sorry but that's the economic reality of it all. Yeah, so um, that's the that's the idea of how it works. And I think that's already it in regards to variations. I'm going to be continuing with that system, uh, trying to develop that. Um, the things that I mentioned earlier in regards to hooking this up into the condition, it would be the last step. And after that, it is really just the question of, well, how do we handle the fact that there's going to be fragments? Yeah. Now, this is not something I can show you here without a problem, um, because, well, I need to... This... Sorry, <laughs> one thing at a time, Nori. Uh, I can show you uh, exactly how this works in Fragments, because, well, I've been also reworking the map, as you can see. Yeah, and I'm going to be going into that uh, in just uh, just a tiny second. Uh, but first of all, I do want to take a quite a quick breather, and uh, I'll be right back, and then we're going to look at, uh, well, the other shit uh, that I've done here. No? So, uh, BRB. Alright, cool. I was about to say so again, but I'm doing a, doing a conscious effort not to. I wanted to do a bit of um, um, just one or two more words in regards to what's going to happen with the variations, yeah? Because I need to check what happens if you go into a fragment. And this is not something I can show you right now immediately, uh, because I need to show you something else first, uh, because it's blocking the way. Yeah? <laughs> but I do want to mention that. As you can see here, I've updated a lot of the map now, yeah? and this one here I showed, I think, already last week, but what you can also see, well, the enemies are now, well, a lot more present on the map, yeah, um, and, um, well, this is kind of a big thing. So on one, we have big changes to the map and the field map and so forth and so on, but I had this problem while I was working on the field map, namely the question, how much effort should I put into this, considering that it's just the overworld field map? I love working on this map and I will probably spend a lot more hours on it considering also how big it is and how it's also a prototype for me to try and get used to well, making maps in a new tile set and also making maps that are not just there for you to traverse but also that have more of an effect and I want to show you exactly what I mean by that by walking forward here and uh, triggering this battle here <laughs> because if you remember or even play the current version of Anarchy, what usually happened is you would walk into an enemy and then what would happen is you would trigger a battle on a different scene. So you would get transferred on a different scene and that is where the battle would usually happen. Now, the way I did this was already from the get-go very hacky, but it's not in itself, how should I put this, a faulty solution. But it does create a lot of problems. And the biggest problem of these is the following. If I work a lot on this field map, if it's just to navigate and trigger battles and to collect things and have dialogue, that's cool and nice and everything. But I would also at the same time need to work on battle maps, which is why I never really wanted to over overexert myself working on battle maps at the moment, because I felt like I need to make a lot of them anyway. So, <laughs> when I was talking about some, uh, sorry, sorry, when I was talking to somebody, a really good friend of mine who's played a shit ton of video games and whose opinion I respect tremendously, 
I asked him what's the most important thing for you in these kind of grid top down um you know um battles yeah like this one here what's the most important for you what what like what kind of features do you feel are needed and what what should the general gameplay experience be what is the defining factor in it and he answered me saying well the maps <laughs> There is a lot of different ways on how you can make a, a top-down tactical RPG cool. But he said to me, if you have good maps, and then you just need bare bones mechanics or bare bones features, because the maps can make the the encounters exciting. And I think that is a really important point. If you if you compare the general, you know, the three people in a row kind of battle where it's all just static and you're standing there and pressing attack and then they jump to the enemy, hit them and then they jump back to their spot. This is what we get in addition to that. Because we can position our characters and that's why I chose the grid battle system too is because I love the idea of positioning being really important and range and speed and all these things yeah and this you don't usually have to that gravity in the regular system although there's a lot of great hybrid systems don't get me wrong but that is why i chose this particular one and so i think it's only natural to say okay well why don't we why don't we take the field map we already have and just make the battles there now now <laughs> This is a huge can of worms because on one hand it, it it solves so many problems i don't even want to start well because once again my implementation was hacky and there's a lot of things with switching scenes and then going back to the old scene yeah you get naturally you also get loading screens and all that stuff on one hand and then there's also of course the added factor that it's a bit immersion breaking because well you get transported to like this arena and then you fight there Whereas if you fight in the actual world, I, I think everybody would agree with that and say, well, that's much more smooth. But on the other hand, well, it also creates a lot of problems because now you suddenly have the field map is also at the same time the battle map. So the game needs to, or the map needs to be made in regards to both having a nice field experience where you just freely walk around and then trigger battles or get items, hold conversations and so forth, yeah, complete quests. But on the other hand, you also need to balance it for the combat. Yeah? And so um, let me just show you what I mean by that. You can see here, uh, well, obviously the grid needs to uh, com com um, how should I put this? The grid needs to comply with the map. And because I've already worked so much on the map, I had to figure out a lot of things. Let me give you an example. The first and foremost biggest example is the following. You are playing as a player, <laughs> yeah, as a player character, which in this case is Lorna. So I had two options here. One is I say, okay, I'm just gonna wipe Lorna off the map and then you deploy her the same way as I deployed Lime just earlier. The other option is I say, well, I just leave her on the field and then I deploy the other people. And that's what I'm doing at the moment. And I like the solution a lot and we're probably gonna stick with it. So we'll have to see how this goes. But there is, well, obviously also a couple of problems with it. Yeah? Um, but none that I have encountered yet as much. In regards to the deployment, then obviously also was the question, well, where's the deployment zone? Because you cannot simply just deploy everywhere. Let me just demonstrate it to you one more time um, because I've already skipped through that part. Uh, but I do wanna, wanted to show it to you um, uh, very, very explicitly. We're gonna run into these guys again and you can see two things here. Um, one is there was a little blip of movement with Lorna and also with the slimes because we obviously need to be centered on grid on the grid right and the movement here is much freer versus in the grid well you can move one grid forward and one grid backward and that's it it's a lot like RPG maker if that makes sense yeah where you have the entire map split into grid cells and you can move from one to another grid but of course with unity and Golod and also with unreal and essentially every engine on the market barring rpg maker you have a lot you have a lot more freedom in terms of your movement yeah you can walk diagonally and so forth and you can do that in rpg maker too i know and you can break the grid system and all that yeah i know but it's all very hacky the idea is really this that at the start of the battle every character no matter where he is needs to be assigned to a grid cell otherwise the grid system doesn't work so what I then said is, okay, well, in regards to the deployment, why don't we just do this? I could have 
two options here again. One is I say I predefine specific spots where you can spawn, um, you, where you can deploy your people, which is great in some cases, but for these regular battles here, I didn't really feel it's appropriate because that would mean I need to define a lot of different player spots all over the map. So what I did instead is I literally just said, okay, well, take Lorna's position and take the cells around her in a certain formation, which you can see, it's like this, um, sorry, it's once again, I had the same exact same shape like two weeks ago and I struggled to name it, but uh, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a rectangle tilted by 45 degrees, okay? And that's essentially what this is. So in this mask, you can then deploy your people. And right now you have space for 13 characters, which I think is appropriate. And there's also gonna be, sorry, but this also then of course generates a new problem because what if you're in such a tight space that you don't have enough people to, uh, no, enough spots to deploy all your people in? Well, that's tough luck, right? That's essentially the map, the terrain already influencing the battle in sort of, uh, in, a, in, a, in some kind of capacity. So, so to put this all into perspective, what we have is now a much more seamless and smoother experience. But on the other hand, what we also have is a lot of problems that we'll need to tackle over the next couple of months. But I'm more than willing to prepare, uh, I'm willing and prepared to face these problems because I think this system is just so incredibly fucking cool <laughs> that it's worth it. Yeah, this could be a core feature, I feel. And now, well, this. <laughs> There's a couple of games that are like that, but it's not really the usual typical top-down, um, you know, uh, JRPG kind of thing. But it has actually been established much more by games like, for example, Baldur's Gate or Bioware, Planescape, Torment. Yeah, a lot of games where you immediately on the same map fight the enemies. That is both the field map and the battle map. And so there's no division between these two. And I think the system is just incredibly fucking cool. But yeah, we'll see about that. Maybe we'll talk again in half a year and see what my opinion is on it then. But I can already get, already already tell you, from playtesting this, clearing the map and killing things feels much, much cooler, yeah? And uh, well, I think that is the most important bit. So you can see this here, we're gonna attack the slime. Uh, there's obviously also a lot of rebalancing that needs to be done, not so much because of the battle system being changed but but because I enjoy the battles a lot more now <laughs> and so I notice a lot of things which are kind of um, interesting especially in regards to the beginning where you don't really have a lot of options right the beginning balancing the beginning is always really interesting because well you don't have a lot of options and so you can't give the enemies a lot of options either and oftentimes the first few enemies in any game are very much just hit them and get hit and survive right and so you can see this here we've killed them up yeah, and um, now we're gonna kill the other one. And then we um, finish the battle and then uh, we can talk about all the other shit that is now gonna um, happen in regards to, well, the changed battles here. What I can tell you already is that all the battles have been um, refactored yeah, uh, into into this particular battle system. Even though it's the same, it's just on a different map, yeah, and it's right on the same map as we're traversing. So you get a little victory screen here, uh, and then the camera goes back to Lorna. Now I know this was a very sharp um, recenter of the map of the what is it called of the camera, uh, but um, that's of course things which we'll need to figure out. But that's what I mean, right? These are the kind of new problems. It's the same with the battle transition. I like the old one where it was like boom, 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 right, and click click boom uh, but now obviously i was like okay well this is way too much if i just want to join a battle here and fight a battle then i need something that is a bit more um, straightforward yeah and it's not it doesn't create as much friction but what you can see is well uh, the, the 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 sorry <laughs> <laughs> what you can see is that uh, a lot of enemies have been now uh, placed directly on the map which solves one very particular problem with the old system it was kind of yeah, ob obfuscated what you will be fighting against yeah and now you'll see it and i think that is one of the big biggest selling points of this new system is that if you run into a pack of mobs you will already see what you're fighting. Now, you don't know whether these enemies are level 1 or 2 or whatever, right? So there's a couple of things that need to be changed here, but considering that these are the actual enemies uh, and not just imposters, it shouldn't be too hard, yeah? Because all the data is already there. This B here, for example, has stats. Yeah, it has stats as a combatant, it has a movement speed. Right now, all the enemies are static. But if you remember last, um, the previous update, Marche, 
then um, you should also remember that I was working already on uh, ways to get them to move around. Yeah, And the next idea or the next step building on top of that system would now be to say, okay, all of these mobs now have like patrol roads, they have a certain zone, they have actual behaviors where they roam around, where they might chase you, they might flee depending on the level difference and all that shit. Yeah, uh, They might even run Yeah, and alert other enemies or something like that. Uh, all these kind of things. So I can't wait to play around with that but i love the idea so much that it's now the battles are now on the actual map <laughs> it's just so sorry i know it's such a small thing but i i think you can all i think everybody can agree actually that this is a huge thing because it just gives the world so much more depth and makes it so more dynamic and i just want to put a couple of more things in there oh sorry you didn't saw that sprite layering issue there uh, I'm gonna get into the map in just a second but one more thing I wanted to mention is um, obviously the question if you now run into this mob yeah what will uh, it will pull obviously all of these three yeah you can see this here so we are now in a battle with three mobs instead of just two yeah? uh, sorry yeah because there's obviously three mobs standing there now there needs to be oh there's a bit of a collider issue going on here you can see this here <laughs> I can actually push them around it's kind of cute but more importantly, more importantly is the idea that I'm actually, I actually forgot it, I think. <laughs> Sorry, I'm so excited. Uh, what was I? I was talking about the about the mobs and um, oh yeah right the pull range. Now if you've played World of Warcraft uh, or games like that, you know that there's like social aggro, a thing called social aggro, which essentially means that if you aggro a certain mob then it also alerts mobs that are close to it. What 14 has, for example, is a system called or Final Fantasy 14, is a system where it links certain enemies together and they act as one pack. Yeah. So if you pull this one here and he, he's linked to this one and this one here, I'm sorry, I hope Lime doesn't puke from getting shoved around so much. But if you pull this here and this is linked to this one and this one, then you'll pull all three. Um, it could also be that this one is linked to this one and this one is linked to this one and so forth and so on yeah but it does a much more static predefined system as far as i understand was world of warcraft it essentially just says okay you pull this and then there's a social aggro range of enemies that are kind of quote unquote linked to it as well and then if they're close enough they'll pull that too or you'll pull that too yeah I need to play around with that range because it obviously then defines how far apart I should place enemies but what could theoretically happen if you have an enemy that is here now um, and it roams around and it would roam around in field mode yeah outside of battle and then it would roam around down here it could be that theoretically you pull that too and I think that's a great cool thing because that could mean that you have essentially the similar thing what you do sometimes in dungeons and in, in harder dungeons MMOs is you have to wait for the patrol to go away yeah, uh, before you start the battle. There's an even cooler option that allows you, I haven't tested this yet at all, but an even cooler option that allows you to have enemies and allies, if they're close enough to the battle, to also join in as well. Which means if there was a patrol here and you would be fighting and you would see this patrol coming, you would have to finish the battle before that guy comes down there, right? Or otherwise you pull him too, and so forth and so on. You understand? Like <laughs> I hope you understand that this is now a system which essentially creates a dynamic map that changes and every character that you see on the map, like as a monster and all the NPCs, they all have stats and there's a potential for them to participate in the battle. And I don't know what would happen if you took these guys, because theoretically, let's just try this, okay? Let's do a bit of experimentation here. I'm gonna run away from these guys, okay? I'm gonna just simply gonna... Oh, dude, this takes forever. I have way too many options in this. Uh, I'm just gonna run away, yeah? And I'm gonna see how far I can pull them because I would imagine that I can pull them all <laughs> across the entire map. <laughs> but let's see what actually happens here. Oh shit, I get, I'm all actually in range. But I'm level two already. Oh, and you can also see a bit of problems with the, with the, with the colliders here. I don't know whether, um, oh, because of the chest obviously, right? So yeah, a lot of things that we need to we need to uh, figure out here. But I am on the opinion of literally just um, disabling the colliders completely for this bit here, and then we'll we'll see how that goes. Because in battles, usually colliders don't really fulfill a function. Considering uh, what's usually done by the collider is done by the grid system in itself, as in saying, well, I can't move here, yeah. If I, if I was in field mode and I would want to walk on top of him, I couldn't because of the collider. 
But in a grid system it doesn't matter because it just knows that this cell here is occupied and as such it can't let me move to that cell, yeah. So we don't really need that, but uh, we'll see what we'll do with that. Yeah, I'm probably got just going to remove the collider from it and then the motor method because um, doing the view, the side view that you will see in just a second when the red slime attacks me again right here, here the colliders are disabled anyway and so I might just as well disable them over the course of the entire battle considering we don't really need it. But yeah, you, you can see what I'm doing here. I can essentially just run away from them and uh, well, you know, that's it. <laughs> that's it. And I don't know, but this this has so many so much so much potential to fuck things up. But what I could also do is I just you know um, say you cannot diverge x amount of cells from the original position. Yeah? But um, we'll see what we'll do with that. Either way, I don't wanna don't wanna dwell too long in here. Uh, but um, instead, uh, rather return to the main menu. Uh, is this a? I think it should have saved after my first battle. Oh, what what the heck happened here? Let's just try this again. Okay. Why does it not... Oh, it doesn't... Ah, that's because of the new system. Okay, sorry. I need to check this out because of the because of the load system, right? So you can see this here. Well, now we've got another... Oh, dude. Well, that's sometimes what happens when you fix things. You... You create a complete new issue entirely. Uh, so I can't cancel out of that at all anymore. Okay. Yeah, it's because I had to make this custom script uh, and so you can see that this is here all very problematic. It doesn't even unfocus it anymore. It immediately starts as unfocused. Okay. Alt F4. And then we're going to start this again. And then I just want to... Actually, let's jump into the editor uh, because I think we've seen everything in the live brand uh, or like in the in the actual build. Uh, the, the other shit I do need to show you by uh, being a bit hacky and doing things which I'm not supposed to uh, or which we are not supposed to in the actual game. Uh, so let me just uh, quickly load in here and then we will uh, check this out in just a second. So I'm going to take Lorna here in the scene view and then I'm going to move her over uh, over to um, there. Yeah, So I'm going to take her, da, 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 try not to hit any of these enemies here. And we go upstairs here and then we go here and shove her right on top of that here. Okay, cool. Nah, that's um, how a developer cheats. <laughs> Let me just uh, show you this real quick. Now, if you're in this outfit here, right, and you go into a fragment, it's the shittiest example. Wait, why am I doing actually this example? It's a, I think I just closed. Oh, I just closed. I hold a Ford out of unity. <laughs> uh. <sighs> Let's look at the notepad in the meantime. <laughs> <laughs> so we can get something done here. We talked about the recap, uh, we did a little recap, we talked about the bug reports, we talked about the steam inventory shit, about the equipment, uh, we talked about field battles, um, about the map rework, I think we saw most of the things. There's not too much else to mention, uh, we can talk, um, I hope I don't forget it, to talk about the trees and the new colliders, because I've been, uh, as I mentioned last week, changing all the trees to from uh, tile, from being tiles to being actual objects in the game, uh, which means that they have a lot more, uh, well, I have a lot more flexibility. It's more expensive in regards of, uh, of performance, but on the other hand, um, there's really no way around it, because a lot of the layering issues are just so hard to deal with in the tile system because you notice it's just what well, you really notice it's just made for or not made for max sprites aka the taller sprites yeah um, and mostly for chibi but that is not a huge problem uh, because well we can just use game objects instead let me just uh, do this here uh, and then I'm gonna boost myself somewhere else entirely I hope the fragment is free yep that fragment is free Let's go to Lorna here. Let's search for her in the hierarchy. We're gonna pick up her game object and then we're gonna take that, come on, and we'll move that up here and then to the left and then we'll move her over here. We could have also just uh, changed the transform here in the uh, settings up here, but uh, I'm too lazy for that. So we will we'll not do that. Okay, so the idea is the following. Yeah? You change in the fragment. And uh, da, 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 here into, sorry, change into variation. And then you're here in her sum address. Now, 
I'm excited to see what's going to happen here because I haven't looked at this fragment at all considering, well, it's the latest you can trigger considering this is all surrounded by level 2 mobs yeah, or even level 3. So this is not something you're supposed to trigger very early on but instead something that you might be able to trigger like after 5 or 10 minutes depending on, well, it depends really if you're going for it if you're just playing the game. Yeah, Otherwise it might take like half an hour or so to even get to this point with all the battles. So let's see. Okay, well, that didn't work. Uh, because uh, she should uh, have the other variation on, right? Um, which is kind of interesting that it actually does that here because she shouldn't have the variation one. Um, let me just check that real quick. Was that um, Atlantis? Does anything change with her variation? It doesn't. Set Orc player. Variation Atlas is one. Variation Lorna is one. So let's see what her what her what her stats are here, because she should technically have changed mm -mm -mm -mm. combat information. So variation is still at one, right? Uh, what happens if I unequip that? Oh, okay. So here it un that works. Okay, so that's great. We can equip and unequip that. Did we equip that? Oh, but it doesn't change anymore on the variation, okay. Yeah, so there's a couple of things, as I mentioned, this is exactly the thing I want to be looking at. But, um, uh, yeah, this is just, uh, this is definitely going to be finished for uh, 28th December, considering we are more or less already to the... Oh, are we still in the dialogue? I think we're still in the dialogue. Yeah, okay, so that's also another thing that we need to have a look at because uh, obviously we don't want to be uh, having the dialogue spill over into the next scene. But uh, yeah, that's what I mean. There's usually scene changes and, and all that shit and all the different uh, possibilities that you have. So I do want to uh, show it to you uh, how it works, at least regularly, namely by uh, having her... Do I have... Do I have her? Oh, all right, sorry. I need to go on Lorna and then I need to go on Pivot here. And then I'm going to change her uh, position to circumvent these enemies here so we don't have to fight them again. What I, what I want to have is the following here. You, uh, remember Lorna's military form she just had on? Yeah? And I want you to keep that in mind and how we see her and how we experience her, her in just a second. Because uh, obviously, um, well, she's going to look different here. Yeah? You see that here. And so the idea is that uh, variations only affect the actual world and uh, for fragments you will still get essentially the uh, cosmetic or the, the appearance that I set for you manually. Uh, because it's a certain moment in time and I would appreciate the fact that the characters look as they look during that moment in time you know versus paradise where it's much more about you know wish fulfillment and being what you want to be and all that shit and the fragments are much more about well being forced to live a certain life because that's what you are and that's the kind of life you've been thrown into so I think this is a nice counterpoint, but on the other hand, um, if you like, you're the customer, right? And if you buy a variation for whatever it costs, then I feel you deserve also to have that variation in all aspects of the game. And yeah, so these are the kind of two things I'm weighing against each other. One is artistic integrity, if you want, versus uh, custom, more customization option or wider customization horizon for you as the player. Um, but I'd be happy to hear what you think. Very likely it's going to be an option and an opt-in choice that you can make and say, okay, well, override, override for me even variation appearances and not just paradise ones or paradise main, you know what I mean, right? So um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what we do with that. But I think that's that's just about it. Maybe take one last look at the map uh, because I think um, we are. Apart from that, we are completely done uh, for today as well. And since we are about to reach the fifty minute mark, uh, I think um, yeah, <laughs> we, we we will be over. Under, sorry, we will be under one hour now for every devlog. Maybe except uh, for the patch releases and previews and so forth. But um, that's my personal goal now, at least for for this year. And then next year we'll see if we can even crack it down to be like thirty minutes and uh, then go from there. 
what did I want to say? All right, the map. So uh, let's actually go into scene view here so we can uh, move the camera around. Uh, let's maximize that. And so we can uh, look at uh, these things here. You can see, uh, well, there's a couple of things with the spawning. I don't like the way the spawning works at the moment. I would like for the enemies to be further apart. Uh, there should be a minimal distance. This is like mostly random. Yeah, so these are randomly positioned. But on the other hand, I'd also like to say, okay, we'll leave at least like um, one or two units between each mob so they don't stack like that. But um, yeah, these are like beautification things. Uh, and another thing you can see here too is sometimes enemies get spawned on top of uh, things which they shouldn't spawn. There is technically already a matrix or a layer uh, made for uh, them not spawning on top of objects that are s considered obstacles or blocked. Yeah? Uh, but um, it doesn't really work at 100%, but these are things which uh, we uh, will definitely be looking at and then try to uh, make them right. Yeah? But um, well. I think there isn't too much, too much, too much in regards to, you know, overall changes. I try to make it all a bit more pretty, but I can already see that some certain areas are also a bit over designed. This year, for example, I feel uh, that's just too much on it. And then in certain spaces, there's too little, right? So this, this axis here is very, very full versus this axis being, well, rather empty yeah, if you go down this one. Uh, so yeah, these are just general tiling uh, questions, which will, will figure out 100% um, uh, as we uh, go along. Now, but I think um, that's it. That's it for today, bros. All right. So uh, splash screen time. And uh, let me take a little peek at the notepad to see if I've forgotten any, anything. No, not really. All right. <clears throat> so what's the plan for the next uh, couple of uh, well weeks? Next week, ah, oh, dude, excuse me. The rest of the weekend, I'll try to do more cleanup, try to get uh, the uh, well, the positioning of the enemies correct, and then also do a lot more playtesting to see how the system works and what are the kind of the downsides to it. I also need to do a dedicated look at how what happens, excuse me, when you're fighting on high ground, uh, because. I don't want you to deploy on low ground if you're on high ground and vice versa. Yeah, so it, we're all always working on one area, but I think that works, yeah, or one height level if you want to call it that. Uh, but that so far works uh, pretty flawlessly. But then there's obviously, as I mentioned, the spawning of the enemies where there need to be a couple of there, there needs to be a lot more polishing basically. So I'm gonna try and get as much done as possible um, until the end of the weekend. The other thing I want to look at tomorrow for sure is the uh, Steam inventory item. The, the condition that I mentioned earlier, right, that you can only equip a certain piece if you actually have the Steam inventory item. By the way, also last thing I want to mention in regards to that, um, there is a possibility that you will get two variations for the next patch. One will be the, the one will definitely be released. That is the Ganymede variation uh, that I mentioned and I promised already for 0.1.3, but, you know, kind of delayed it for 0.1.4. But considering, well, that the system in itself already works, we could technically implement that overnight and then well we'd be done with that yeah and um i'll probably do it in such a way that uh ganymede will just randomly choose himself an appearance or something like that uh, and if you have the item you just have a chance for him to wear that and of course if you then get ganymede as a playable character during paradise uh, you can just then uh, use the regular way of equipping an item on him yeah but with enemies it's of course a completely different question because you don't equip items on your enemies yeah um that's kind of the limitation of the system that i'm currently prototyping so um we'll have to see what we do with that yeah or whether we make this a bit an option at all in the future but um what i'm also working on is a lona variation i think i've shown you this um at several points uh, during well these devlogs and i'm not really 100 percent sure if i'm releasing that with the next patch We'll have to see about it, yeah, because I do need a nice, it, it, it's, a, it's a reward, but it's a reward where I need to find a challenge first, yeah. And I would like to have this for you as part of the main quest, that you complete the main quest, or sorry, not the entire main quest, but a segment of the main quest, namely identity, where you have to get Lorna's service card. I'd love for you to complete that and then get the princess item, yeah, and then you're just set from that point onwards. But um, it depends if I manage to get identity properly implemented. Maybe we'll just do a very rough one or rough version of it or something like that. But we'll see about that. Yeah, this is this is to be figured out over the next couple of weeks. 
there will also be an announcement um, like the halftime preview uh, as we do for every patch uh, this will happen next week mid sometime mid next week maybe Wednesday maybe Thursday <clears throat> I'm very likely going to be away on Thursday so expect this hopefully on Wednesday yeah the preview on Steam will be available there uh, in the usual place and then I'll do a, try and make it as structured as possible so you get essentially the gist of the last two weeks of devlog or two and a half weeks depending on how you want to count it all in one nice little announcement and also generate a bit of hype of course for 0.1.4 considering it's for intent, for all intents and purposes a return to form for me yeah, because without doing the cool shit again <laughs> after the little blip that was 0.1.3 but with all <laughs> but with that sorry <laughs> with all that being said um yeah, we're we're done here for today i want to thank you as always very very much for your attention it has been absolutely crazy i also want to give a huge shout out to uh, a person whose name i can't pronounce because it's an emoticon uh, but if you want to have a look into the discussions in steam you will see that i've had a bit of a dialogue back and forth with somebody who's been very very eager to test and as such uh, i want to say a personal shout out to um, that person who will also be in the announcements of course being credited for reporting all of these issues and uh, of course um, also a big um, big 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 shout out to all my homies uh, especially um, <laughs> first among all everybody uh, sir who has uh, for the last weeks uh, just been an absolute champ and a hero so um, huge shout out to him uh, and also lastly <laughs> to <laughs> one more shout out also of course to uh, Hibari who has accompanied me for large parts of uh, paradise and as such uh, my thanks also uh, to her all right but apart from that uh, we are completely done so i will be back of course next week with another devlog and as i mentioned the announcement so um yeah i hope you're looking forward to that and if there is anything in the meantime that you want to get off your chest in regards to trucky do let me know uh, because as you know i love talking about it and uh, conversing about it and even more so if somebody else is interested in it too yeah so <laughs> okay i hope you have a great uh, rest of the weekend and yeah <laughs> i love you very much <laughs> until next time uh, see you around and bye bye <laughs>